But I want to talk about today uh, the key to kingdom living. So, Father, I thank you that you will speak to our hearts and change our lives in Jesus' name. Amen. I had a couple messages prepared, and as I was getting up here after I heard Linda, it kind of directed me. So those of you who are in Cuba, you have to hear this message one more time. But I want to talk about the key to the kingdom. One of the things that is key to kingdom living is we have to understand that there's atmospheres that are created around people. There's atmospheres in the spirit realm, okay? And uh, how many know you get around people who are negative? Uh, you can actually sense that atmosphere. How many hear what I'm saying? You walk in a room where two people were just fighting. You walk in, and all of a sudden, it's like, i got to get out of here. You know, you can cut the atmosphere with a knife, right? And so there's negative atmospheres that are created around people, but there's also positive atmospheres. And as believers, we need to carry the presence of the Holy Spirit. So we can get in people's presence, they sense heaven, right? Jesus said, when he prayed, he said, My Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come on earth as it is in heaven. I want to tell you something about heaven. Heaven is a positive place. There's no negativity. There, there's not, you, don't, you don't walk in heaven and go, i got to get out of here. People are negative. No, it's, it's full of joy. It's positive. Okay? So when we talk about heaven coming to earth, we're talking about the atmosphere of heaven should be in our homes. The atmosphere of heaven should be in our church. The atmosphere of heaven should be around us in our workplaces. Okay? And that's what God wants us to do, is he wants us to carry the presence of heaven. In 2 Corinthians chapter 2, verse 14 to 16, it says, Now thanks be to God, who always leads us in triumph in Christ, and through us diffuses the fragrance of his knowledge in every place. There is a fragrance of heaven that should follow your life. In every place that you go. How many know there's a fragrance of heaven? Okay? And I want to say this here, is that thanksgiving, thanksgiving is, is, the, is the aroma that attracts the Holy Spirit. I can show you scripture after scripture after scripture that thanksgiving actually prepares the atmosphere for the supernatural. Okay? Uh, constant negativity and murmuring attracts the demonic realm into your life. You think about the children of Israel, as they were, uh, the Hebrews, they were there to go into the promised land. God said, you're going to go, you're going to defeat the giants, you're going to take the land, right? And so they, were, they started to murmur and complain. And, and, and they cut off the blessing of God. The atmosphere that accommodates the Holy Spirit is gratitude. Say gratitude. Now, as the last little while, last six months or so, I've been connecting with Pastor Rick Sementero. How many know uh, Pastor Rick and Kathy were here a few weeks ago? And he's really rubbing off on me with this gratitude thing. Like, I've never met a guy who's so grateful and so happy for everything. He can be in the midst of a storm and in a trial and in a valley, and he, he won't talk about the problem. He'll begin to give God thanks for something that's good going on. In his life. How many hear what I'm saying? And that thing's rubbing off on me. How many know if you get around people who murmur and complain, it's, it actually you, it rubs off on you? But if you get around people who are grateful and have gratitude, it rubs off on you as well, right? And so King David understood this. And we see in 1 Corinthians or Chronicles chapter 16, verse 1 to 7. We're not going to read it for time's sake, but I'm just going to summarize it. David put the Levites in charge of three things. Say three things. They had three things they had to do. Number one is they had to bring to remembrance and record. So they had to record and bring to remembrance what God was doing. The second thing they had to do is they had to thank God. They would just go around, thank God, you're worthy, and they'd praise God, and they would thank God. And the third thing they, they would do is they would praise and celebrate, and they would rave about God. That's the only thing David said you guys need to do. You need to rave, you need to praise God, and you got to take down notes. That's your job as a Levite. And he understood that when they, they did this, they were actually sanctifying the atmosphere for God's presence to move. Because thanksgiving sanctifies the atmosphere. And so the enemy understands this. So if we listen to those thoughts and we start meditating on the negative things that are happening in our lives, how many know there's negative things happening in all our lives at some point, right? And we can choose to meditate on it and complain. Or even if you're in the darkest time, choose one thing that you're thankful for. It might be your kids. It might be your job. It might be, it might be you got to find out what that is. And then you begin to thank God for that. So I thank you, Lord for my kids. I thank you, God, for my spouse. And you find something you can thank God for. And as you begin to thank him, you create an atmosphere for the Holy Spirit to visit your life. Amen? In Psalm 100, verse 4, enter his gates with thanksgiving. 
You can't even enter the gates of God's presence without thanksgiving. This is how we enter into a relationship. We enter with thanksgiving and into his courts with praise. Be thankful to him and bless his name. And David is telling us the key. David was a man after God's own heart, and he's given us the key. If, we're, if we enter into his gates with thanksgiving, if we enter his courts with praise and bless his name, we're creating an atmosphere for the presence of God. Okay? And in Second Chronicles chapter 5, verse 11 to 14, again, I'm not going to read it all, but I'll give you the summary, is that the trumpeters and the singers, okay, were as one in praising and thanking the Lord, the Bible says. So they got together, the trumpeters and the singers, and they were in one. What were they doing? They were praising and thanking the Lord. And that's why I like, appreciated the worship this morning, even Don was singing some songs that were just praising and magnifying God. How many know you create an atmosphere for God to move? Okay? And what happened when the singers and, and, and the trumpeters were thanking the Lord? The Bible says the house was filled with a cloud. See, if we want the presence of God to come down, if we want to have revival in our church, if we want to see the power of God fall in our families, we have to be thankful because in being thankful and in praising the Lord, we create an atmosphere that attracts the cloud of God. If we murmur and complain, we attract demonic presence. But if we're thankful and give praise, we attract the presence of God. It's pretty awesome. It's pretty simple. But how often we don't do it. Okay? And so the house was filled with the cloud, so the priests could not minister because of the cloud. They fell to the ground, for the glory of the Lord filled the house. I want to say this. I really believe if we become a people who determine to be thankful, even in our trials, even through the struggles of life, say, God, I choose to be thankful. I choose to meditate on the things that are good and true and lovely and pure and of good report. So that the peace of God would guard my heart. I believe we would create such an atmosphere for the supernatural in our homes even that our kids won't backslide. That the lives of those who come to visit our homes would be transformed because of the cloud. How many hear what I'm saying this morning? Okay. In Psalm 67, verse 5 to 7. Let's read that one. Let the people praise you, O God. Let the people praise you. Then the earth shall yield her increase, God. Our own God shall bless us. Okay? Uh, next verse. And the ends of the earth shall fear him. There's something to be said here. The Bible's telling us in this verse that thanksgiving produces increase. Say thanksgiving produces increase. It creates increase in our produce. You want to raise? Start thanking God for the job you already have. You, you, want to see, you want to see a blessing? I mean, start thanking God. I was telling the people in Cuba, you know, you want to have a good harvest? You want to see your gardens grow well? You want to see a lot of produce? Begin to thank God. Begin to praise Him where you're at now and watch God bring an increase. It's in the Bible. He will bring an increase when we praise Him. The second thing this verse tells us is that there's going to be an increase of the blessings of God. How many see that? And the only thing we need to do is choose to praise him. Okay? What is the will of God for your life? I'm going to read in verse Thessalonians chapter 5. How many want to know what the will of God is? Okay, we're going to look at what the will of God is. First Thessalonians 5.16. Rejoice always. Okay? Number two, pray without ceasing. Number three, be thankful for everything. For this is the will of God in Christ Jesus for you. Okay? So, so here's the thing. Say rejoice always. Rejoice always. What, what does always mean? Always. So it doesn't matter what you're going through. Yes. How many know we're going to go through dark times, but in the midst of that, find something to rejoice about. See, God's given us a strategy to defeat the wiles of the devil. He's showing us how to have victory. And so we have to rejoice always. Number two, we need to pray without ceasing, which just means you need to be in communion with God all times. Don't be distracted, but go to Him. Okay. And number three, be thankful in everything. Amen. Now, it doesn't say be thankful for everything. Because how many know some things that come into our lives are not from God, right? Every good and perfect gift comes from the Father of light, so there's no variation or shadow of turning. If there's crap coming down the old swamp tube, it's probably from the devil. So you don't thank, so you don't thank God for Everything, but you thank him in everything. How, how many? 
You like the swamp tube, right? But um, gratitude, why, does, why is Paul telling us? Because gratitude opens heaven. I want to read a passage of scripture here in Acts chapter 16, verse 20 to 26. It deals with uh, Paul and Silas. Okay? And they brought them to the magistrates and said, These men, being Jews, exceedingly trouble our city. Verse 21. And they teach customs which are not lawful for us, being Romans, to receive or observe. Then the multitudes rose up together against them, and the magistrates tore off their clothes and commanded them to be beaten with rods. I don't know about you. I've had some persecution. How many have had some persecution? I've never been beaten with rods yet. That has not happened, thank God. And when they had laid many stripes in them, they threw them into prison, commanding the jailer to keep them secure. And, have, okay, and receiving such a charge, he put them into the inner prison and fastened their feet with stocks. And so they were put into the inner, which means the, the deepest, darkest prison. There was probably, you know, excrement and everything. On, I mean, it was not like a prison we have here in, in Lindsay. Okay? It, was, it was a real prison, a dungeon. But at midnight, Paul and Silas were praying and singing hymns to God, and the prisoners were listening to them. Hallelujah. Now, I want you to see something here. In the midst of persecution, they choose to sing hymns to God. Okay? And how many of us, if, if in the midst of our trials, in the midst of persecution, in the midst of being in the dungeon, that we would, instead of whining and murmuring and complaining and saying, I don't understand why, God, and is it your will? Are you trying to teach me something? And, and messing with that garbage. What if we just started saying, God, I choose to praise you right now. I thank you that you're my victory. God, I choose to worship you. And I want everyone to hear that even in my darkest hour and in my darkest times, right now, God, you're with me. And you begin to praise God in the midst of your darkness. And the Bible says, suddenly, say suddenly, suddenly. the foundations of the prison were shaken. Yes. And you know what, some of us, you know, people in, in the Christian realm, we're all Christians here, sometimes have prisons that we're dealing with. We're saved, we're on our way to heaven, God loves us, his love's not on the dis table for discussion, but we have, we're shackled in addictions, or we're shackled with uh, bad habits, or we're shackled with sin issues, and we're in a prison. And, and, and the Bible says in the midst when they were praising him, the foundations were shaken. So whatever the foundation is that has locked you in this prison, God will shake it when you praise him. And the doors were opened and the chains were loosed. The atmosphere is cleansed when we give thanks. And so they, and here's another thing. The Bible says that the chains were loose and the doors were open for all those around. Man, we get to a place when we're praising God, where we're worshiping God, that not only do we get set free and delivered, but those that can hear us in our vicinity get delivered. Because when God's glory comes, everybody gets free. And it all starts with praise and thanksgiving. Can we look at one more story here? Looking at the story of Daniel. How many know Daniel? He was thrown in the lion's den. King Darius set three governors over the whole kingdom, and Daniel was wise, and he chose Daniel as one of those governors. But the other governors and the leaders in, uh, uh, were, were actually uh, decided to betray Daniel. How many have been betrayed before? Okay. So they're like, you know, we don't like Daniel. He's not one of us. He's got these weird God ideas, and, you know, so we're, we're just going to betray him. And we're going we're gonna to go to the king and we're going to make a law and get him to sign it, right? To say that if, if anyone's caught praying to anyone but you, they're going to be thrown in the lion's den. And so the king, you know, wasn't thinking. He signed the thing. And they betray Daniel. Knowing that Daniel's going to pray. And so what Daniel does is Daniel, the Bible says, that he opened his window. And this is what it said. It says, he prayed and gave thanks to God, as was his custom for many years, as the Bible says. And if we would choose to thank God in the midst of betrayal, God would pre pre prepare an atmosphere for the supernatural. See, Daniel needed to be delivered. And as he prayed and thanked God in the midst of betrayal, God closed the lion's mouths so that when he was thrown in the den, they could not hurt him. Amen? And so the Bible actually says that Daniel prayed and thanked God three times a day as was his custom. So this is a part of his life. Prayer and thanks. So gratitude and thanksgiving is the key to the kingdom life. 
Paul teaches us in Philippians chapter 4, verse 6 and 7, it says here, Be anxious for some things. Is that what it says? Be anxious for nothing. What does nothing mean? But in everything, by prayer and supplication. It doesn't say but for everything, but in everything, by prayer and supplication, with thanksgiving, let your requests be made known to God. And one thing I would say that I'm so thankful for my mom and dad, they taught us as kids, when you go for prayer for healing, whether you pray yourself or you have someone pray for you, you ask God once, Father, I thank you that ask that you would heal me of you know, this headache or whatever. And whatever it is, you ask God once. And then after that, you just pray prayers of thanksgiving. So we would, as kids, we learn, okay, we go, well, thank you, God, that I'm healed. I thank you, Lord, that I receive prayer and your word says I'll be healed. So thank you, God. And you know what? Uh, you know, a little bit of time would pass and we'd be gone. Because we can't just pray um, without, without thanksgiving. Thanksgiving is part of our prayer. Because thanksgiving turns your prayer into faith. It becomes the prayer of faith. Does that make sense to anyone? Okay? And so, <clears throat> our prayers can become a list of complaints before heaven. And God's sitting in heaven, and then John, he says, Oh God, I just pray that you would help me right now with my homework, and that you would just, you know, I'm being bullied in school, and this and that, and blah, 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 blah. Amen. It's just, it's just a complaint list. And I love David because David in the Psalms shows us that we can come to our Heavenly Father and we can give Him our complaints. And David did that. He comes and says, oh, my enemies hate me and my best friend has turned against me and life is just terrible and would you take this from me? But, oh God, you are my deliverer. And Father, you are the one who will... You, I'm so thankful and I give you praise because you're the one who's going to be my deliverer. And he began to pray so he would bring his request before the Lord but then he would thank Him for the victory in advance. And that's what God is asking us to do as a church, is to just make a slight adjustment. Sometimes it's just a slight calibration in how we pray can bring revival. Amen? Amen. Hallelujah. You know, when something is dead and needs resurrection, we always start with thanksgiving, right? And when we start with thanksgiving, God will raise up that which is dead. And I'm going to give you an example from the Master himself. In John chapter 11, verse 41 to 43, it says this, And they took away the stone from the place where the dead man was lying, and Jesus lifted up his eyes and said, Father, I thank you that you've heard me. Man, he's showing us. If, if we open up our prayers with God, I just thank you for all the good things that you've done in my life. I thank you that it doesn't matter what the situation looks like. You are my deliverer. And oh, by the way, here's my list of requests. But see, Jesus thanked God first. Say, first he thanked him. Okay? Let's go on to the next verse. And I know that you always hear me, but because of the people who are standing by, I said this, that they may believe that you sent me. Okay? Now, when he had said these things, he cried with a loud voice, Lazarus, come forth. And um, we just have to make that slight adjustment. You know? And uh, like I said, I, I wake up now in the morning and I begin my prayers with, I thank God for my wife, I thank God for my children, I thank God. And I've just started this new habit, it's new to me. And it's transforming my life. It's creating an atmosphere of the Holy Spirit throughout the day. It's creating a gratitude. It's, it's helping me to see God in people instead of their faults because I'm coming from a, an attitude of gratitude. And when you begin to do that, heaven begins to come. The Holy Spirit begins to get attracted and says, you know, the angels are hanging out down the street and they hear Christians walk by and grumbling and complaining. They're like, I'm not going over there. But if you're walking by and you're saying, oh God, you're so good, I worship you. You're great. The angels are saying, hey man, it's, it's like being at home. I, it's like being in heaven. I'm going to hang out with these guys for a while. And you attract you attract the supernatural to your attitude. Amen? Amen? And so God wants us to be a people of gratitude. Okay? I'm going to finish this last verse here. Because in Romans 1 verse 17 tells us how we are supposed to live. For in it the righteousness of God is revealed from faith to faith, as is written, the just shall live by faith. How are we supposed to live? By faith. So when we... Thank God for the answer before it comes. Guess what? We're in faith. Did you hear what I'm saying? 
So this is how, as believers, we're supposed to live. Now, I want to show you how the unbeliever and the wicked live. Can I show you that? Let's go to the next verse. Verse 21. Because although they knew God, they did not glorify him as God, nor were they thankful, but became futile in their thoughts, and their foolish hearts were darkened. I want to say this, that if you... um, if, if you don't glorify him as God, and if you're not thankful, lack of thanksgiving can lead to futile thoughts. But when you wake up and say, God, I thank you, I love you, I worship you, you're awesome, God's presence comes, the Holy Spirit starts talking, the word of God comes alive, everything makes sense. But if you wake up and you grumble and complain and say, I don't know where you are, God, I don't know what's going on in my life, and how come my life's so odd, and you open the Bible, you start to question, you say, I don't understand, maybe God isn't, maybe God's word isn't true, or maybe this, maybe this was not really God's word, or and you start questioning, you become futile when you stop thanking God, because when you stop thanking God, the Holy Spirit stops coming. Because the Holy Spirit is only attracted to thanksgiving and to praise. Amen? Philippians chapter 4 verse 7 says, The peace of God that passes all understanding will guard your hearts and minds in Christ Jesus. Many Christians wonder why they have no peace. It's because they have not been thankful. Just a slight adjustment and say, I choose to be thankful, and the peace of God will come. And verse 8 says, Finally, brethren, whatever things are noble, say noble. Whatever things are just. Whatever things are pure. Whatever things are lovely. Whatever things are of good report. Whatever things are full of virtue and worthy of praise. Think on these things. So Paul's telling us, think about good things. Think about noble things. Because you know what? This is how heaven... Think like heaven. Think like heaven. Don't focus on negativity. Don't focus on issues. Focus on God. And begin to give God praise. Begin to thank God. Now, I preached this message in Cuba. And there's one woman, she looked depressed the first night. And she was there and she was singing on stage. And the next day I came after preaching that message on the Sunday. And she was all happy. And she got up and she said, I'm so thankful. She goes, I, I just heard that message. I'm so thankful because my daughter here, she must have been about 18. She's on the worship team with me. And she goes, you know, and, and she's serving God with me. And we're serving God together. I'm so thankful that she's not out in the world. And she's serving God with me. And, and she was just full of joy. And the presence of God filled the house. And then people got up and said, well, I'm so thankful for this. And, I'm so th-. and people begin to find one thing to be thankful for. And you attract heaven and the glory of God falls. Amen. 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 Hallelujah. My wife is sitting on the edge of her chair. Do you want to say something? Okay. <laughs> Good thing we know each other. <laughs> well, and I'm not sitting on the edge of the I think it's because I, when I, I know when the Holy Spirit's saying something. So it's like, okay, I've got to say something too. So I used to be one of those who struggled with a lot of negative thoughts. And um, I, I didn't see myself as a negative person. I used to be quite a happy girl, even as a little girl. And I know I have a lot of joy in my life too. But in, I was going through when it became ev- very evident that I was inclined to thinking negative. And then we've been digging into teachings and the highway to wholeness and they were teaching us, they were challenging and they said, do you know that you can inherit thought process? And I thought, that's interesting. And you know what? I started to see how that was happening in my life. You know, how many times I would just come. And then, you know, so I want to verify what Travis was saying. And, of course, God knows how to put people together that need each other. <laughs> so, you know, many times he'd be like, don't think so negative. And it would just come, you know. But the thing is, we've got to stop accepting everything that just comes. And we have to reprogram. And that's what we're doing with the Word of God. Like, that's why we bring those thoughts down into captivity and bring it into obedience of Christ Jesus. So you might say, well, I'm just a negative person. But I'm here to tell you that you're not. Because, you know what, you might struggle with it, but that's not your identity. And I know when I was struggling with it, I would cry out and I would say, God, who do you say that I am? Who am I to you? Because I sure knew who I thought I was. But you know what? That wasn't who God thought I was. And that's not who God thinks that you are. So we have to ask him who we are in him, our identity in him, because we will fool ourselves and we'll fool others, because that's, that's not our identity. You might have a spirit, you might struggle with a spirit, but that's not who you are. Your identity is you're a child of God, you're a daughter of God, you're a son of God, and that's who you are. That We sing a song about that. that you know, that's who you are, so we have to focus on knowing who God is, but we also want to know who we are. 
So, you know, it's, it's okay for you to ask God and say, who am I to you? Because you need his perspective on you. And don't just accept everything that comes down that pipe tube, you know, because it's lies many times. And we can inherit those thought processes, but we can break that. That's what we're learning in the Highway to Wholeness, and we're also going to be teaching the Cuban people, and it's exciting. Amen. So. Awesome. So why don't we stand together? I'm going to lead you in a prayer. Say, thank you, Father, for every good thing you've done for me. And I choose to find something good to thank you for in the midst of every situation. And I thank you, Father, that you have already forgiven me for not being thankful because you know my heart. So, God, I ask, Lord, that you would be glorified in my life. And I choose to be thankful moving forward in Jesus' name. Amen.